Yellowstone's volcanic past is evidence found in petrified trees and rocks. This is from Caldera's uh, Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles' latest, May 13. Feeling petrified, evidence of Yellowstone's distant volcanic past found in the rocks and trees of this supervolcano. Caldera Chronicles, as we know, is a weekly column written by the scientists and collaborators of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. And this week's contribution is from Annie Carlson, research coordinator at the Yellowstone Center for Resources, Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone, renowned as one of the largest volcanoes in the world, generating intense interest for both scientific community and the public. We know that it has over 60% of the world's geysers, has over 10,000 hydrothermal uh, areas, and some of them, well, most of them, have not yet been located, not yet been mapped. Uh, one of the new uh, geothermal areas recently developed uh, just northwest of West Sum Lake of the uh, Yellowstone Caldera Lake has been found, and we, uh, we were told that now that the geologists will be going out for their field trips starting May 1st, they will be visiting that area, so we expect them to return with a lot of information concerning that. Now, Yellowstone, renowned as the world's one of the world's largest volcanoes, generating intense interest for both scientific community and public. While much is known about the volcanism occurring here within the past two million years, many people are not aware that this landscape was also profoundly shaped by much older volcanism 50 million years ago. The Absaroka volcanic field dominated the region that is now Yellowstone National Park. Absaroka volcanic field. Today you can explore extensive fossil forests resulting from this past explosive, explosive uh, activity. Imagine the scene 50 million years ago during the Eocene epoch. The climate was much warmer. Dense forests of subtropical and temperate trees covered the lowlands. Out of these forests emerged several magnificent stratovolcanoes resembling Mount Rainer or Mount Hood in the Cascadia Range. Moving higher in elevation up the flanks of these volcanoes, the forest composition changed to coniferous trees and then to stunted alpine vegetation. At the summits, vegetation gave way to thick fields of snow and ice. Now imagine that the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO, was actively monitoring the Absaroka volcanoes. We know, and we know they were not, uh, they were not people here 50 million years ago. Please humor us, it says here. Eocene volcanoes followed the same laws of physics and chemistry as modern volcanoes. YVO, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, Scientists would have monitored ground deformation, seismic activity, gas emissions, and other signals such as they do today. For example, the increase in gravity, meaning that there's an increase in magma formation, which means that there is a, a, an imminent volcanic eruption. That's one of the other things that they um, monitor. Occasionally, YVO scientists would have noted dramatic spikes in these signals, and witnessed several truly impressive eruptions rivaling, uh, the, rivaling the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. For roughly 8 million years, the mighty Absaroka volcanoes transformed the landscape that we now know as Yellowstone. During eruptions, lava and ash flows gushed from the volcanic summits, the heat melted snow and ice creating lahars, thick flows of muddy debris that rushed down the mountainsides, like wet cement. Similar to the 1980s Mount St. Helens eruption, millions of trees were leveled and blasted and buried under the lahars. Layer after layer of lava, ash, and lahar flows accumulated to thicknesses of thousands of feet. Can you imagine? Mountains worth, mountains worth of ash, thousands of feet eventually hardening into rocks that make up today's Absaroka mountain range. This expansive mountain range covers the northern and eastern Yellowstone regions. 
and not surprisingly, it contains vast deposits of petrified wood, remnants of the ancient buried forests. I don't know if any of you have ever seen petrified wood, uh, if you were lucky enough to touch a part of it or see it. It's unbelievable. It is ter it's just turned into rock. And you can uh, see that it was actually a tree trunk. It is totally uh, petrified. Now, the tree, petrified trees of Yellowstone are remarkable for several reasons. First is the sheer volume. It's one of the largest deposits of petrified wood found anywhere in the world. Second is the diversity of the tree species, including spruce, pine, cedar, oak, cypress, ash, dogwood, mag magnolia, and more. This diverse representation of array of ancient trees that inhabited the lowlands and up the flanks of the Absaroka volcanoes. Third is the fact that many of these petrified trees are upright rather than lying on the ground. So how is that possible? Some trees were buried upright where they grew, while other trees were transported down slope in debris flows and eventually settled vertically with their roots wad between them. Today, park visitors can observe ample evidence of the Absaroka volcanoes. A fantastic example of an upright tree is found just west of Tower Junction. They follow the sign for petrified tree. If you continue on the road towards the northeast entrance, you will drive by scenic mountains like Baronet Peak and Amphitheater Mountain. The stratified reddish-brown rocks of these peaks are the hardened layers deposited by multiple eruptions of the Absaroka volcanoes, multiple. And if you like to hike up Mount Washburn, you will stand atop the eroded remains of one of the actual volcanoes. It's thrilling to have pieces of the geologic past laid out for discovery on the northern landscape, on the modern landscape. And you can recall once again the 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption. And now imagine scientists from the Cascades Volcano Observatory 50 million years in the future Remember, you're humoring us. Perhaps they're studying an impressive array of petrified wood resulting from geologic forces at work just today. And uh, we just wanted to uh, go into the Absaroka volcanic province, the area along Yellowstone supervolcano, Yellowstone's petrified trees. Uh, magnificent uh, structures. There's also what is called the Chinese Wall, but there's something else. The petrified trees occurring within the Absaroka volcanic rocks, approximately 50 million years old. They are the result of the rapid burial and silification, and not volcanic eruptions. And this is it right here, as you can see. Uh, I'll leave a link below for you so you can read more and see the uh, diagrams and pictures, the aerial pictures of the lahars that uh, flooded the areas. Uh, also the chimney rock lahars with arrows showing directions of increasing class size. Unbelievable. And something called the Holy City, Goose Rock. You'll see a tremendous... Uh, what something called the Chinese Wall, two miles west of West Wapiti, a good example of one of the volcanic dikes, which is, I don't know how many miles, like hundreds of miles long. The dikes formed when molten rock was injected into the fractures beneath, uh, within the mud flows. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events. 
events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.